Hi, I'm Laura, and I'm a software engineer at Etsy, and today I'm going to be talking about Git and GitHub. So Git is a file system for version control that helps people collaborate on coding projects. You and your project partners can work simultaneously and contribute to the same code base. GitHub is one example of a popular service that handles hosting the central repository that everybody contributes to. So today we're going to be going through some examples about setting up GitHub accounts and Git on your local computers and how to create repositories and collaborate with uh, project partners on code. OK, so let's get started. So this is the GitHub website, github.com. And let's also introduce the characters in our story today. So we're going to be working with Charles Babbage and Ada Lovelace. So Babbage has this great idea for his analytical engine, and he wants to contribute. Um, he, he and Ada want to work together on it. So. Babbage is going to be creating the engine, and Ada is going to be writing a method for computing Bernoulli numbers. So let's see um, how they can go and use Git to accomplish this. OK, so first, uh, Babbage has to create his GitHub account. So put in his username, email address, and a password, and he clicks Sign Up for GitHub. And uh, so there are options for different um, repository sizes. You can just go to the bottom one, which is the free version. So he's going to choose that. Um, let's see. And so here's the main landing page, um, which is what happens after you create your account. So now let's say that I, Charles Babbage now has to like um, set up configurations in the terminal. So what you do is you uh, git config global and um, put in your name and also your email address just like that on the command line. And so this just sets up the, um, the config so that when you're pushing to GitHub, it knows what email address and uh, username you're coming from. OK, so the next thing you have to do is create SSH keys. So your local computer and the GitHub repo need to have a way to talk to each other. And uh, GitHub has to know that your computer is legit and it's OK for you to be um, pushing code. So the way you do that is you go into your .ssh folder, and then you type uh, this keygen string. Um, so this generates uh, a both a public and a private R RSA key. And you also will put in the email address that you're using with your GitHub account. OK, so now it's generated a public and private RSA key pair. Uh, you can type in a name for the file where this is going to be stored. So Charles is going to call this the Charles B RSA key. And then it asks if you want a passphrase. You don't have to actually put one in. So you just hit enter, hit enter again. Uh, it writes some pretty random art for you. And now you've generated the RSA keys. So the next step is to uh, officially add these, these RSA keys to um, the set of SSH keys that your computer recognizes. So you just do SSH-add and the name of the key you just generated. And now you can put your public key on your GitHub page. So if you go back to GitHub, you can see Charles Babbage has added a beautiful profile picture of himself. Um, if you click down to the SSH keys section, uh, it says there are no keys because you haven't set any up yet. So you're going to click Add SSH key. And now head back to the terminal and um, copy the public key to the clipboard, which you can do by the, using the pb copy command. And then paste it into the SSH key place on GitHub. So click Add Key, and now you're all set. OK, so now Charles Babbage is all good to go, and he can actually uh, push code to GitHub um, from his computer. OK, so the next step is that he has to create a repository. So let's say he's already started uh, coding this analytical engine. And so he has this great class, analytical engine, and doesn't do much right now, but initializes some memory, which is, I guess, good for computers to have. Uh, he's also created a readme file, which just simply says, this is the analytical engine. Um, so he has these two files, and he wants to now put them on GitHub. So the way to do that is you can initialize it um, from your uh, GitHub account on the site. So if you can see up here in the upper right, it says new repository. So go ahead and click that. And now uh, give your repo a name. So he's going to call it Analytical Engine. Um, you can keep it as a public repository for now. And then just click Create Repository. 
There we go. Okay, so the next step is, so now we've created the repository on the main um, GitHub side, and now we need to uh, create the repository on the local machine side. So it has some steps here for creating a new repository on the command line, and we're going to follow those. So we go into the directory uh, where the code is stored, the analytical engine directory on Charles Babbage's computer, and type git init. And so this generates all of the, um, the files that um, turn this into a git repository. And now uh, we just typed ls. So we can see we have two files in this directory, as we saw before, the readme and the analytical engine uh, Python file. And now we want both of these files to be uh, in the repository. So the command for adding a file um, to a repository is git add. So we're going to do git add the readme. And next is git add the analytical engine. And so what this does is this adds um, these files to what's called the staging area, which means that they're going to be prepared for being uh, pushed up to the repository in what's called a commit. So the next thing we have to do is actually uh, create the commit. Um, but first, we can go in and just type git status and see that these two files, the readme and the analytical engine, are the, the two that are about to be committed. So now we're going to actually create the commit, meaning uh, you know, bunch together the files that are going to be pushed up to the repository. And you, can, you should always add a commit message that describes what's going on with these changes. It makes it easier if you're trying to uh, debug later if you want to know like where you know, where did the change come from or what changes happened at what time. Um, you can look back to the messages and see, you know, what was going on. It's really good for communication in that way. So this commit is going to be uh, just basic structure for the analytical engine. So we put that in. Okay. And so Git is now telling us that we've prepared the commit. It has two files changed. Um, of course, the two files we added, just four uh, lines of code. and it says it's creating um, basically modes for each of these files. Okay, so now it's so now uh, since this is a new repository, we have to explain that we are associating this repository with the one that uh, Babbage has created on GitHub. So the way we do this is by the add origin command. So we're saying the uh, the origin of this repository on GitHub servers is uh, Charles Babbage's analytical engine git repository. So we can do that. And now the final step, we're pushing the code up to the uh, repo. So git push uh, origin master. So what this is saying is that um, we're pushing to the, to the origin on GitHub, and we're pushing our current branch, which is called the master branch. So by default, you're on the master branch. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit later about what it means to create different branches for feature development. But for right now, we're just pushing our current master branch up to origin. There we go. And now GitHub gives us, or sorry, Git gives us some nice output saying that we, you know, push the master branch and we're all set. So now if we go back to the GitHub site, we can see that these two files are now um, on the repo because we just pushed them. And you can see in the middle the commit message is there saying that this is our, you know, basic structure for analytical engine commit. And we're all set. Uh, another cool thing about GitHub is that when you create your README file, it will uh, take whatever text is there um, and put it in the README section of the main repo page so you, so you can write some description about your uh, repo for anybody else who um, wants to come find it later. This is particularly good for like open source projects or things where you want to kind of communicate to a wider audience. So, But right now we just have it saying, this is the analytical engine. Okay, so uh, this is all good and stuff, but the real main awesomeness about GitHub is that you can collaborate with people. Um, so this would be nothing without collaboration. So now we're going to go in and add Ada Lovelace as a collaborator so she can also contribute to this Git uh, repo. So we go into settings, um, which you get by clicking the gear on the bottom right side of the page. And you can click on collaborators. And currently we have no collaborators, so now we're going to add Ada Lovelace. So we search for her. There she is. And now she's added as a collaborator. OK, so let's see. So one collaborator. Um, OK, so now I guess this page uh, was actually from Ada's perspective. If you can see in the upper right, her uh, profile picture is there. So now we're seeing we're in Ada's, um, in Ada's GitHub, and we see that the repository um, is there. She can view it. Uh, and if we see, 
So when we go in, we can see there, on the right side there's the SSH clone URL in the bottom right. So that is going to be used in a moment for actually taking the repository and putting it on Ada's computer. So uh, now we're in Ada's terminal. And so she's going to do git clone and then that clone URL. So she's cloning the, the analytical engine repo. And what clone does is it just takes an entire copy of the repository um, as it exists on GitHub and copies every single file and any, um, any previous versions that existed to um, onto your computer. OK, so it's going through the process of cloning, et cetera, all good. OK, so now this uh, created it as a subdirectory in the current folder. And now it's going to go into that directory. Here we go. She's on the master branch. And now Ada is going to add uh, a couple of lines to the analytical engine. So she's gone in and she adds a punch card, another good thing for this analytical engine to have, and an ALU and uh, arithmetic logic unit. So we've got those. And now she needs to um, commit these changes. So first, let's run a git status to see where the, the state of the repo is. And you can see that she has changed the analytical engine file, and git has recognized this. Um, and so the next step is to, oh, what, so one other thing in addition to status, what you can do is um, look at the diff, or like the exact changes um, that you did. So if we do git diff, we can see that uh, she's added a couple of lines. Self.memory, it says it was uh, deleted in red and then added in green, but it's actually the same line. It's just the way GitHub or Git picks it up that it happens to be there twice. But anyways, you can see she's added these two lines. That looks great. That's what she wants to commit. So now she's going to add this file to the staging area so it can be committed. And, and now she's going to commit this. And the commit message here is initialize punch card and ALU. So that describes the changes she did. OK, so we did that. That's great. And then uh, push it up to origin, git push origin master, and that'll work. So it's good. So now if she goes into um, GitHub, you can see there are two commits now, Charles Babbage's initial commit, and then on top is Ada's commit. Uh, so there we go. OK, so now um, the next thing is that so now uh, Charles Babbage's repo is behind because Ada pushed some new changes, but Charles hasn't yet gotten those changes yet. His, his repo is going to stay where it was at, at the state of his first commit until he pulls down the new code. So that's what he's going to do now. So to do that, you just run git pull. And there we go. You can see that um, you can see by those green plus signs that there are three changes made to the analytical engine.py file, and those are the lines that Ada added. So that's great. Um, and so now his repo is at the state, um, the state of the uh, origin repo too. OK, so the next thing we're going to talk about is merge conflicts. Sometimes if two people are editing the same file at the same time, it can lead to uh, merge conflicts when they try to commit it. So let's say that Ada goes into the readme, and she's like, oh, this is the analytical engine. That's too boring. Let's make that a more descriptive description. And so she removes it and says, the analytical engine is a Python representation of a mechanical general purpose computer. That's great, Ada. Good job. Very nice description. OK, so now she's going to go up and commit it. Uh, so git add. Um, as a shortcut, if you want to add every file that's been changed, you can do git add dot. That'll add all the files. She does that. And git commit. Um, she says she's changing the description in the readme. And now she's going to push it. And as you can see, it says, uh, exclamation point, rejected, failed to push. Um, updates were rejected because the remote contains work that you do not have locally. So that, uh, so that actually um, is not quite the merge conflict yet, but it's showing that if you try to push things and you have not yet pulled down the recent changes, GitHub will not allow you to commit because it, it only lets you commit if you have the uh, most recent version of the um, origin repo on your computer. So she's going to run a git pull to get the most recent changes. So let's do that. And we see, OK, remote, counting three objects. There we go. And then it says uh, there was a conflict. There was a merge conflict in the readme. So that means that, there, that it looks like uh, since she was working, Charles was also working and didn't let Ada know that he had made changes to the readme. And these changes actually affected the stuff that she was trying to change to. So it, when this happens, what you have to do is go look at the files. Um, Git will have an indication of where the conflicts occurred. You have to um, choose one or the other version or uh, between those two and then um, commit your changes. So let's see what that looks like. 
So here's the README file now. You can see it has all these um, side arrows. And so it says head, and then it has some text, and then it has a bunch of equal signs, and then more text, and then more arrows, and then uh, a bunch of letters and numbers, which is the um, commit hash of the other commit that um, led to this merge conflict happening. And head means uh, it's where your uh, working copy is on your computer. So we can see that um, Ada's changes conflicted with uh, Charles Babbage's changes. He had written, he had taken out the original line and had written the analytical engine is a proposed computer. Um, and so Git doesn't know what to do because it has two versions of the same line now. So Ada decides, she talks to Charles and they decide that Ada's version is a, a good way to go. Um, so she then goes and uh, deletes his change and also deletes all of the arrows because they're, they're not part of the actual code. They're just there to indicate where the conflicts happened. So now she just has this in the readme. And now she's going to go through and uh, just commit this change. So commit it with the message that this is just fixing the merge conflict. OK. And now she does a git push, and it pushes fine, and we're all good. Awesome. OK, so uh, now let's talk about branches. So branches are a good way of doing work if you want to um, work on a particular feature, and then instead of pushing that up to master repository immediately, push it up kind of just in a separate section and allow uh, your collaborators to look at your code before adding it into the main repo. So let's say that Ada wanted to um, work on Bernoulli numbers in a branch. So she's going to uh, create a new branch of the code called Bernoulli numbers. So you do that by doing git checkout dash b and the name of the branch. So now it says switch to a new branch Bernoulli numbers. Awesome. Um, and now she's going to go and edit the files and add the Bernoulli numbers code. Um, let's see. Don't know why I had that twice. Anyways, OK. So uh, so here's the code before she added um, the Bernoulli numbers stuff. And now she's just going to add a basic function definition for computing Bernoulli numbers, leave a to-do in there to finish it later. Um, but she's going to push this up right now. So um, now she goes through and adds the file. and. Uh, commits it, says this is the start of the Bernoulli uh, numbers function. And now uh, the next step is to push this branch up to um, the origin repository. So you do this by saying git push, and instead of origin master like before, we say origin Bernoulli numbers because we're pushing the Bernoulli numbers branch to the master, uh, to, to origin. OK, so it's all good. It says a new branch was created. OK, now let's go into um, GitHub again. And you can see if you click on branch master in the main repo page, now there's uh, two options for the branch. There's master and Bernoulli numbers. So we're going to look at Bernoulli numbers and see what's there. Um, there it is. And you can see that Ada's uh, commit start of a function to compute Bernoulli numbers is in this branch, but it wasn't in the other one. Um, and now the way to. Um, the way to indicate that you want uh, the main owner of the repo to check out your changes and see if it's good to merge them into the main uh, master branch is by doing a pull request. So you click on um, pull request. I guess you can see, where is it? Um, see, it says this branch is one commit ahead of master in the middle, and to the right it says pull request. So if you click that, then you get to the pull request page. Um, and we're going to click new pull request, the green button. And then it shows you the uh, code that has changed. So you can see. On the right side, the, the green section is the code that Ada changed. Um, and now she's going to create the pull request by clicking that green button again. Um, and here, so now we have to indicate that we um, are comparing uh, master to Bernoulli numbers. There we go. OK. Um, OK, so now she uh, can write some comments um, about this branch. Uh, and she's saying, um, writing how excited she is about working on the analytical engine. You could also put more like descriptive things about what you changed um, in this branch. And then you create the pull request. So here it is. And now uh, Charles Babbage can log in. Um, and he's like, wow, it looks great. Awesome. Let's merge it. So he uh, can comment on that. If you want to have more discussion about the code, if you want to like make suggestions for how it can be improved before it's merged, you can also do that here, kind of do a code review in this area. Um, OK, so now he clicks the Merge button, clicks Confirm Merge. Awesome, and now it is all merged. Uh, so the next thing you can do after that is delete the branch. It is no longer necessary because all the changes from the branch are in the main repo. So we're going to click Delete Branch. 
and there we are. Okay, so now you can see these are all the commits that have happened um, in the repo, and it all um, kind of lines up nicely. And if you wanted to go back and see what the code was at a previous state, so that's the beauty of version control, you can just click on any of these commits, and it shows you where we were. Okay, so now we're going to do a demo of um, something called GitHub Pages. So GitHub Pages is an easy way uh, that GitHub has um, has created for doing web hosting. So it allows you to uh, create a repo with um, a main page that um, you can just easily push up and have it hosted on GitHub. Um, so let's go do that. Okay, so here's the main GitHub Pages site. Um, and it's actually very straightforward. They explain how to do it on here. So it says hosted directly from your GitHub repository, and you can anything you push to that repository will be on your, your GitHub Pages site. Okay, so let's go through the steps here. So it says go to GitHub and create a new repository named username.github.io. Okay, so let's do that. So now we're here in here's Charles Babbage's account. And let's see. So we're going to go to his main page, and once we're there, we can create the repo. There we go. Okay. Uh, repositories. There we go, okay. New repository. Awesome, so now we're on uh, the page that matches this, so we're going to call it uh, his username.github.io. And note it says that the first part of the repository doesn't exactly match your username, it won't work. Pressure's on. Okay, so Charles Babbage1. And is it .github.io? Yes. Okay, .github.io. Awesome, okay, description. My personal website. Very excited. Okay. Uh, let's see. Don't need to initialize with the readme. Awesome. So now we're going to do create the repository. Okay. Now a lot's happening. Let's see. So the next step, as always, is cloning the repository uh, to your computer. So let's go back. Okay. They recommended the HTTPS method. So hop over here and just do git clone repo there we go uh oh cloned an empty repository is that what we were supposed to do probably not maybe we should have let's see is there a problem with that will it let us um, oh that's just a warning it's fine so it's supposed to be an empty repository that's all good Okay, so now we can see we have the Charles Babbage one .io repo in there. So now let's CD into that. Awesome, we're in there now. Okay, so now let's make the index.html page and just put hello world into that. So echo hello world into index.html. There it is. Okay, great. Now let's commit it. Uh, git commit initial commit. should always add your files before committing them. Git add the file, git commit. There we go. And now we're going to just git push origin master. OK, so now what this is doing is pushing our index.html page up. And now we can go to uh, see here, username.github.io. So let's do that. Okay, so it's all gotten pushed, and so now we can go to charlesbabbage1.github.io and see uh, Hello World on that page. So let's go here. Uh, charlesbabbage1.github.io. And there it is, Hello World. Awesome. So in addition to Hello World, you can put you know any project there. I think if we go back to... Um, to the documentation here, they say that you can use Jekyll to blog, you can use your own domain, you can do lots of stuff, and they have lots of documentation. It's awesome, so you should check that all out. Great. Okay, so that was the talk on GitHub. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Now you know how to uh, use GitHub to collaborate on projects. Have fun.